from Southern California, but uh, I moved to Nashville like four and a half years ago. And uh, I had this really cool experience the first year, uh, well, really the first week I moved to Nashville. And if, if, you, if you've already heard this story, I apologize. I can't not tell it before this song. Um, I moved to Nashville, and, and, and the first realization is no matter what you relocate, or, let me rephrase, no matter what you do for a living, relocating for work is scary if you don't know anyone. New city, new people, doesn't matter what you do for a living, that's scary. So I show up in Nashville, and I don't know anybody, and I'm like, what am I doing here? How long will it take me to get back to California? But that first week, I got this email, uh, and I got invited to this number one party. Now, um, I always thought a number one party, when I heard that, was like, oh, so an artist had a number one record, and then they throw a concert every... Well, that's not what it is. It's cooler than that, actually. Nashville and uh, country music, they still celebrate songwriters. Very important to me. So a number one party is about recognizing the songwriter when they have a song that goes number one. Now, do you guys remember that David Nail song called Whatever She's Got? She got them blue jeans painted on tight. Everybody wants on a Sunday night. <laughs> you guys remember the song, right? I know it's Saturday night. We're just Sunday here. So I get invited to this number one party. And, uh, this guy, one of the songwriters, John Knight, gets up and he tells his story. And, and what he doesn't do is talk about the song at all. And I think that's what caught my attention. He got up and he grabbed the microphone and he goes, when me and my wife were 18 and our first child was 18 months old. Now, you can do the math on when they got started. He said, we got into a U-Haul in Texas with about $1,000 and some food stamps so that we could move to Nashville so that I could be a songwriter. He said, about every week or two, he would try to quit writing songs to get what he called a real job. Now, quick pause. You know what a real job is? One that puts food on the table. I don't like real job, but I understand where he was coming from. You work your ass off and you make enough money to support yourself and a family, you have a real job. But I still respect where he was coming from. He was shopping his songs all over town and it wasn't making money and he got worried for his family. But he said every time he did that, every week or two, when he tried to get a real job, his wife insisted, no, 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 no. We moved here for you to be a songwriter and that's what you're gonna do. And so, if you fast forward to present day, four and a half years later, John Knight has like 20 number ones he has seven songs on my new record coming up. But at the time, beautiful belief, I'm sorry, at the time, uh, whatever she's got was his second number one. And he gave his wife all the credit. He called her his beautiful believer. And when I heard that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know the rules, the songwriting rules in Nashville yet or who I gotta give credit to, but I gotta write that song. So it was on the first record, it's one of my favorites, and if you know it, let me hear you. <laughs> 